Right, I thought I'd just show you this. This is the uh, deck that we powder coated. Gary's put it all back together now. It's ready now for sale. Let's have a little closer look at it. Right, so here we are. This is that uh, large, what one is it, Gary? What's it called? Sovereign. It's a large Sovereign. It's a very big deck on this one. And uh, it's got that Honda engine on. Let's just show you around it first. And, uh, and now he's actually refurbished it. And this, I think he paid 15 pounds for. And it was a non-runner. Right, so this is it, as you can see. He's put the graphics back on it. And uh, I think you'll agree that it's come out really nice. Although you probably can't see it fully now. And uh, that deck, as I said to you, is fully powder coated. This, you can scratch that, no problems whatsoever. It's a freshly painted deck, as you know, with a uh, powder coat. And uh, all the blacks have been done. He's painted the handles on it as well. And this, as I said to you in the last video, this was orange originally. So he's actually repainted that with a black. It was missing a drive handle, which he's actually got one from a, a, an old mower. So let's hear it start up then, Gary. Hondas normally start up very well, don't they? On with a choke. There we go. Listen to that. working at the back there as you can see plenty of tread on the tires throttle control up there as you just saw it all works correctly lovely bag on this one nice and uh, clean that one so yeah this one should sell really well it's got one height adjuster isn't that right gary yeah it does all four wheels so as you can see, when you lift up one, one handle, it brings the whole deck up. So easy to use, and that one should sell a treat. So that was it. That was our first powder coat in deck there, as you know. And uh, I probably will do some more. Let's go have a look in the log cabin, see what we've got going on. I'm doing one of my retro hatch videos, as you can see. I've already done one of these, but one of my kind subscribers said to me, uh, sent me a little letter saying, could I restore this? She found this up in the loft, and uh, she used to play with it as a child. She doesn't want it back, she said, but if you can restore all I'd like to see is a photo of it. I'm obviously doing a video on it. And uh, yeah, it's one of these little Mary Lou washing machines. As I say, I have already rep repaired one of this. This one, the paintwork is, is great on this one with regards to the graphics. The other one was totally rusty that I restored, but uh, this one, I, I've got to powder coat it because it has got some rust around the edges and that. I'm going to be sandblasting these and I've, lucky enough, I've got the graphics which I can reapply on there in the right order. There's not a lot I can do about the lid on that one. As you can probably see, it's got a crack in. They've all got a crack in them, basically. The other one I don't got a crack in, but that will clean up nicely as well. Things like this need repowder coating, and I also powder coat and uh, sandblast all this lot. And this one's got a different color top. The one I did before had a red top on it. Uh, they must have made these in different colors. This one's got a sort of gray silver top on this one. So yeah, as you can see, it has suffered over the years. It's probably about 60 to 70 years old, this thing and uh, probably been in the 1950s or early 60s, something like that, I would imagine. But uh, it's all there. Just got to produce my little magic on my Retro Hex channel. So if you're interested in seeing that rebuilt, do pop over there and you'll probably find it. You'll definitely find the other one that I've restored anyway. So Gary's moving on with the lawnmowers. Right, you ready? Put this one up there. Right, that's it, okay. So this is the one he bought the other day. This is the big mount field which we've done. Is this the same as the one you just done, we just shown? No, this was the one we've done before. The one before that, the one that's already sold, yeah. So this one has got this electronic or electric start mechanism on it. I'm not too sure yet. We haven't taken the cover off, so we don't know what it's all about. So coming around here, as you can probably see, this one has got a starter on it. Uh, whether it's worth us removing this or whether it's worth us reinstating it. Where would the battery go on this? I don't know, I saw it. it's got no ignition or nothing out of there. Yeah, there's, someone's actually removed, if there was any levers or whatever up there, it's actually been removed. Or we don't know whether or not someone's put this engine onto this deck or what, I don't know whether it's come off another one. I can't see provision on there for a starter, or maybe up here somewhere, I don't know. There's holes in that handle there, isn't there? Yeah, I think that's the right engine, that's the other mount for on it. Right, so yeah, we won't know until we actually start stripping bits off of this, so... Um, He's gonna do that now and then we'll come back when he's actually taken that off and we can see underneath to see if we can just remove this connection part because we don't want that sort of hanging there.
them uh, Clark power impact drivers there again this one's the only two and power one it has got a double control on there which you can probably see if high and low I didn't realize that I was trying to do everything on the low and it weren't working all that well until I switched over to the high but they do this on the larger one I think it's four or five amp power someone told me you get more power out of them so if you're gonna get one go for the high amp run what well, was this the one where the belt was dragging you think no, that was that one out there. This one had a slow drive, and I think I found it. Oh, right. Eh? The adjuster nut ain't there, look. Oh, well, that's why then, obviously. Uh, yeah, this one, he said the drive was sort of dragging, the, and there's, there should be a bar coming through there with a nut on, which you can adjust the tension on the belt, so that's obviously missing. That's not a problem. We can find and sort that out. So we'll just get that cover off of there. Again, screwdrivers normally, but sometimes they hold on with 10 mils. This one's a 10... Uh, just a little Phillips screw on this one. And as you can see in there, typical of what normally happens, they get clogged up, the belts come off and then people think they've lost their drive. So that's why we always strip these down so you can see exactly what goes on under these lawn mowers. And that's why we film all this sort of stuff for you. And even around the belt there, as you can probably see right around with the mechanism, as you can see, that's all uh, chock-a-block right there. We'll clean all that out, as I say, because we're stripping the whole deck down anyway. Get the old WD on it, just to give them a bit of lubrication, give them a help. And as I say, with spokes like these, that's where the um, the impact gun does come in handy. But it always does help to give them threads a good wire brush off, uh, just to make life a little bit easier. It gives the threads a chance. And don't forget to wear your safety glasses when you're doing that as well, folks, because them little bits can shoot off with them wire brushes. There we go. So hopefully we're giving that the best chance for the impact driver to do its stuff. Right, so we always undo the back two first, as you can see. See how easy that span off? As I say, we're giving it the best chance. That's a nut at the back of that one. So I'm coming up the top here, just holding on the, on the top of that while Gary whips it across. Hold on, oh, go on in. That's it. So again, taking the back two out still gives you the ability, if you're doing this on your own, to actually put your hand over the top, hold the engine in place while you whack that last one and it won't drop down then. So it's just an, it's just an easy way we found of doing it. Because I'm here, I'm gonna hold the top with the spanner again. Two back ones with 13, the front ones are 12 mil. I don't know whether someone's had this off before. Yeah, that's what, a 12? Yeah. Let's take that on the top there. Just hold that on the top there. Right, yeah, I think it might even be smaller. Go on in. Off? Yeah. Right, so that's that nut off. I'll just lift the weight off of that engine. That belt's still on down there, isn't it? Yeah. So we're just gonna... Yeah, where's that go, that nut? And a little metal tray. Okay, can that belt be... Can you get the tension off that belt? Belt's off. Engine out, we've still got a cable connected there, haven't we? Yeah. That front? So as I say, we've only got this cable now just to undo, then the engine's totally free. That just means pushing them little things in with a pair of pliers, unhooking the cable, and the job's a good one. That's it, unhook that. Again, there's normally only a couple of cables that are connected to these engines, it's very, very simple. <laughs> Right, that's it, so I can lift the engine out now and put that on our very handy little engine stand. And now we can play about that to our heart's content. There's the starter motor, as you can see for the, um, uh, the lawnmower there. We probably will be disconnecting that. We can probably just take these cables off of there, I suppose. So there's the two to the starter motor, which is that black one there. So that one can come out. That red one there comes up and goes to a switch up there. That's our coil for running uh, the spark. So as I say, this one is uh, something which I think we'll be able to take away as well. 
Right, so again, Gary's gonna strip this down now. We haven't got to really see that on camera. We'll see you when he's finished that. See you in a minute. Right, so next day now, and uh, here we are on this deck again. We just got some 80 grit paper. We're not gonna strip this completely down. We're gonna paint this one, but the paintwork on this was pretty good. It did have some rust bubbles on it, as you probably know. And all we got is a DA, and just take it down with 80 grit, just to get the, the, the edges feathered in, as I've shown you before. Let me show you, hold on. As you can see there, and that's where we've uh, feathered in. That was all flaking and rusting there. It's pitted there as well. We'll coat that, again, bare metal with the vac sand treatment, just up here. But it's all feathered in, as you can see. And then, as I say, we'll go over that with uh, a primer in that area. We no need to prime the whole lot once we've sanded it down. And uh, then that will be painted again, exactly the same as the other one you see us do. As you know, this engine had the starter mechanism all on it. We haven't gonna, we ain't gonna put this back on, obviously. And uh, as you can see, the engine now is without that. It's literally just a bolt on. We will keep this lot of spares because you never know when you do get one in that has a, a starter motor and all the bits that go with it. And that's, as I say, that is a complete unit there. So that bolts straight onto there, but we're leaving it off, as you know, and this will be a straightforward pull to start mower as well. So Gary's just having a bit of a clear up now of the lawnmowers. Now we've got three here now. Two of these you got the other day. One was with a missing wheel. What one was that? These two? 470 on this champion. So these two, have you tried starting these at all? The 470 runs and drives. Right, so it's got that running. What did you do to get that one running? Uh, what did I do? Just put some petrol in it. Why didn't it, did we try and start that before? Oh, no, the engine was loose, wasn't it? Oh, that's right. That was the one with the engine loose. Do you want to start it up or can you start it? This was the one, as I say, where the engine was actually uh, knocking because it, the blade was touching the boss. Hold on. Barney. Head away, Barney. There we go. Drive one in at the back there. There you go. That one wasn't turning off a minute ago, was it? No, I had to adjust the kill switch, it weren't touching. So when he was pulling, you might have remembered that kill switch thing was pulled in the up position, and it was, was that the one that was... Uh, both of them was cable tied. They were both cable tied on, weren't they? But as I say, the kill switch was poorly adjusted, and it wouldn't actually turn off. So that's what he's done there. It, someone probably run it until it ran out of petrol. Yeah, it's been on its side because it's dripping oil out. Yeah, as you can see, there, look, typical sign that it's been tipped up there, it's got oil coming out of there sort of thing. So that one actually starts and runs, uh, and what about this one? This one had no oil in it, and it's hard to pull over, so I think there could be internal damage on this one. Right, so, it's probably not going to bother with that then, are you? No, it's going to go as spares or repairs. So he'll just put that, he'll advertise that for spares or repairs. Someone might want to whack another engine on it, we don't want to mess about with it at the end of the day, so... Uh, he disconnected the drive belt, and it was still quite tough to pull over, so it may have been run low of oil, so bearing in mind there was no oil in it anyway, so that's that one. So that's going out, and what's this one over here? That's an old um, trading I got given. Oh, um, right. Does that run? That runs, yeah. And that's a run as well. That one also has a wheel missing. Again, these have been sitting about in the polytunnel for ages. Come out of the way, Barney. Barney, Barney. He can't hear that barn is deaf, look. Let's give it a bit of a price. Prime me, all right? So let's try that again. There we go. Yeah. There you go. That's another starter. So again, these are just mowers that have been sitting down. Uh, these are yours. Oh, they're my ones, are they? I don't, yeah, they're, I don't like them ones, them uh, plastic decked big ones. Although that one, if I remember rightly, this one was a trade-in as well. And this has got a, it runs and drives, I think. Was that a, a key start? I can't remember. I can't, yeah. It was a key start. Yeah, that was a key start, which had been disconnected on that one. And if I remember rightly, it had one of the little O-rings missing on the, um, some of them have on, on the emulsion tube in the carburetor. Yeah. I didn't have an O-ring for that one. So that one actually runs and goes. I got that sorted, but it did need an extra ring. Then I forgot about it. Let's have a look at it. Again, these have been sitting about for literally ages. It's got, uh, it looks like a Tecumseh engine on that. And that, well, I do remember that one with the carb and I just stuck it in there. I think I've done a video on this one as well and got it running. But that was what I did find out. It did have a little washer mission, uh, missing. As you can see, it's got a key start thing on it, but I'm not really bothered about that. Uh, again, I might even take that off. I think it has got a battery under there, if I remember rightly. That's where the battery compartment is on this one. And again, then there's these two plastic decked um, 420 GLs. They are Flymo ones, yeah, and I don't really like them ones for some reason. I don't know why. Was it? So there, there's three plastic decks. So, you know, 
for things like this, I'm probably not really too bothered about it. I, I could put them on sort of Facebook and just put out them sort of thing, you know. There's the self-propelled one, as you know, which uh, Gary's worked on and we've actually got running absolutely perfect with the uh, sovereign handle there. And then there's this one, which is a big American one. You got this given to you a while ago, didn't you? I've had it about three years now. Yeah, and as you can see there, the deck is actually totally rotten. I was going to do something with it, but I don't think it's really worth it. So uh, it's got a Briggs & Stratton uh, 600 series engine on it, which is, I think it's is it 690 cc's. That did run as well, didn't it? Run on the front wheel drive. Oh yeah, and it's also, because it's an American mower, it belonged to an American chap at the end of the day, so uh, there's that one as well. We're probably out these ones, as I say, put them maybe as a job lot, put them on their Facebook, and someone will come along and buy for spares or whatever, but uh, who knows? Plenty of options. Right, coming over here again, this is uh, Gary's other lawnmowers, which again, have been in the polytunnel for ages and ages. Again, a uh, grass box for them too. I don't know about these two. You got grass boxes for them? So he's got the two grass boxes for them. Coming in here into our little stash. He's got the uh, Honda Izzy, which we're going to refurbish. Oh, it's a bit more room in here now, isn't it? Makes a change, isn't it? Yeah, that's what I find. And as you can see, mostly um, Sovereign or sort of, what, what are these Sovereigns or Champions, aren't they? Uh, grass boxes we've got there. Uh, coming along here, some car bits there. And these were my ones, weren't they, down here? This old line and then plastic ones are yours. So these down here are mine. Um, again, I can't remember, that was a big one. God, that's an old one, isn't it? I've had that for years, that one, haven't I? I was going to give that to your mother once for a birthday present. <laughs> once I've done it up. So that, there is that one there. And, uh, yeah, this is where I obviously used to do me gardening. Uh, when we've done a, a series of gardening videos and uh, I made that workbench up but it'd be nice to have this all cleared Gary's been using it for storage and stuff like that he's got some stuff up here which you uh, possibly could sell what's this from? this is from a Volvo isn't it? Oh, 244 that's a badge oh right 244DL yeah he's got a few carbs up there a few hub caps and stuff like that some clocks over in the corner there again all stuff that can go on Facebook or, or eBay really Austin yeah, Austin, yeah. Yeah, so there you go. There's all my gardening stuff down there when I used to garden. But I mean, it's a handy space to have. I mean, this, don't forget this polytunnel now, as I said before, it's been up for about over, well, five years in May, I think. And uh, it blew down, not blew down, it sunk in once, I think two years in. And that's why I had to put these uh, trusses up there, as you probably remember. I did videos on all this. So if you want to look at how I built this polytunnel, there is a playlist of all that as well. So yeah, so we've got stuff to do. There's an old hater sitting down there. They're Volkswagen air covers, aren't they, or something? Yeah, the air-cooled fan. The air-cooled fan cases on them, so he's got them as well. But as you can probably see now, we've got a walkway in the polytunnel now, so that's a, a nice handy thing to have as well. We should start clearing these mowers out. Hopefully we can start doing them this year. As I say, what are you going to do with these then? Do them up or...? I'm going to do these ones up, and the ones I've got all over there are going to be spares or repairs on Facebook. All right. So they're going to be done because the decks are pretty solid on them, aren't they? Yeah. And again, nice and easy to refurbish, as I've told you before. Briggs & Stratton 35 classic engines on every single one of them. We carry spares for them. Grass boxes for all of them. Should be a few bob there. All right, we just pulled this one forward. Again, not been started for literally years and years. Um, we just squirted some easy, well, easy start up it and put a bit of petrol in it. So we'll try and give this one a go now, shall we? Was this one of mine? Yeah. Bit stiff that choke lever. Out of the way, Barney. Pulls over. Oh! Choke off. Well, it started anyway. Might be worth selling this one on its own, then, Gary. I say the deck's faded, I know that, but we might give, be able to clean that up with our Revive It products, I'm not too sure. All the springs are there. It's all working, literally. Been sitting in that polytunnel for three years. Three years that one. About three years, this one. So it's got a grass bag with it. It just wants a blinking good service, I would imagine. The deck's not broken at all. Give it a clean up, might be all right. Yeah, okay, wheels are all good on it. Is it not self-drive, is it? No. No. Oh, well. Perhaps I will sell that one. Plastic mowers, eh? you got to love them. 
Just to show you over here, I'm halfway through my restoration on this um, Mary Lou Child's washing machine. I've done the sandblasting now. And one thing I've got to do is to um, get a water trap fitted on my sandblaster. I've got one on a compressor, but obviously the airline's quite long. And what happens is, is that the, the head of the uh, gun actually blocks up. Let me show you. So coming in here, I've just done this bit. As you can see, this come out of the, uh, this is a bowl for the wash, little baby washing machine. So I've just done that. Let's put it out there for a minute. And what happens with this gun is this blocks up, I'll show you, with water. I'll just take this little nozzle off of there. I've gone, I want to get a new gun for this. There is someone who sent me a link to a pretty good gun. And can you see in there, look, it's all clogged up in there, but also in here as well. This, um, where the water sticks, look, it goes all sort of solidifies and you can't get airflow and sand flow or grit flow out of there. So every now and again, I have to stop and dig all this out. And hopefully if I had a water trap bolted onto the side of this, look at that, look, it, uh, it wouldn't happen so much, but this uh, is a real nuisance having to do this every time. I've done it three or four times already, just sandblasting this job, because it is very, very, Moist or damp in here because it's very damp in the UK at the moment. So it's saying I've got to get sorted, but uh, there you go, that's what happens to that anyway. Right, and while I'm here, I'd just like to uh, also thank um, Sean Kennett. Sean says, Hi Martin, enjoy watching all your videos and hopes this comes in handy for you. Sean has actually bought this off of my uh, wish list, let me show you. I could have done with one of these ages ago actually, I should have had one, but uh, there you go. It's a brake winding kit for winding the, the, the calipers on uh, different various cars. I've got one for one maker car and I have to make do with a pair of clamps or whatever uh, with, when I'm struggling on in other words. But this should really solve a lot of problems and really help. And it's got both, both piston winders, one for the normal thread and one for the uh, left-handed thread as well. So thank you very much indeed for that, Sean. That's fantastic, absolutely fantastic tool. So Gary's just been having a bit of a clear out. Look what he's just found in his uh, polytunnel. Didn't even know you had that. So that's a handy tool actually. It's got the old Euro connector on it, and it we'll have to change that because I've got the different ends on mine. So worth doing. I have to get some more ends as well. But yeah, again, like a, a impact tool, ideal for doing this sort of stuff, which we mess about with. And again, as I say, what you don't realise is, is that you need stocks of stuff as well. Um, oh, you can't see in there the spray guns and various bits and pieces in there. Uh, again, multitude of different canned paints and stuff like that, as you can see, we've got here. This is all stuff you do when you need when you're sort of restoring all different, a multitude of different things. And uh, down there as well, there's all our sandpapers, fill up uh, sanding blocks and stuff like that, all different grades of uh, sandpaper. I mean, they cost a, a lot of money when you buy them in the box form, like we got 80 grit there, 180, 500 grit, I think Jimmy's used a 240, and also loads of different papers there as well. So that's what we got there. But I mean, even things like, um, like the acetone and stuff like that. Uh, as you can see, I've gone through that one. I've literally had to go out and just buy. I bought a five litre bottle of that, so I've got that as well. All different polishes, as you know. So don't forget, if this is your first time here on my Retro Restore channel, do uh, hit the subscribe button and also ring that little notification bell uh, and mark all your preferences to all. That means that you'll get notified every time that we upload a video. Anyway, thanks very much. I'll leave it here for now. As I say, plenty going on at the moment and uh, do keep tuned and we'll see you again in the next video. And until then, bye for now.